It's Rob! Tony! And I'm Jeff. We're in gaming, and that's you! Hey guys, what's going on? It's Warshack here with The Inn, and due to popular demand and a lot of comments we've received, I'm gonna go over five quick tips to make you an overall better Hearthstone player. When I posted up a picture of me hitting Legend last season, we got uh, numerous comments asking, hey, is there any tips that you could show us, no matter what deck we're playing, to just make us a better Hearthstone player? What can we do to improve our game? So I thought about this a little bit and uh, comprised five tips to kind of implement into any game you're playing to, you know, up your game. So we'll get right into it. So our first tip is actually going to take place before the match even starts in the mulligan phase. So of course you kind of want to get the best hand you can and mulligan out the cards you know you don't want, but you also want to take a look at your opponent's hand and see what they're getting rid of and kind of replacing. So if we look at the warrior, he actually got rid of two cards. This tells me there was two cards in his hand worthy of keeping against a mage early on, which is probably going to be either a Despite or a Fiery War Axe. So off the bat, we can assume that he's probably going to coin into a Fiery War Axe here and or play a Despite on turn three with the coin. It looks like the Fiery War Axe is what he picked. Also, a side note, let's say the Warrior mulliganed every single card in his hand. He probably didn't have a weapon in there, so there's a high likelihood that he probably will not get the Fiery War Axe or the Despite, so you can kind of play a little more aggressive than if a Warrior were to keep some of the cards in his hand, knowing that he probably has the weapon off the bat. You should pay attention to the mulligan in every game, not just against the warrior. That's just the example I wanted to use with the weapon because of how much Grim Patron and Control Warrior we're seeing. But another example would be, let's say you're going against a Druid and he keeps two or three cards. You can probably expect a Wild Growth in there, a Darnassus, Aspirant, or maybe even an Innervate. So just kind of keep in mind to what your opponent's keeping in their hand and that'll give you a good idea of what is gonna be coming in the next couple turns. Even though you don't know exactly what those cards are, you kind of have the gist of it because they kept them that early on in the game. So tip number two is actually something we always try to go for, but we may not think about it as much as we should, and that's making favorable trades. In this example, I'm not the one making favorable trades. My opponent is, but it still, I think, is a great example of someone taking advantage of someone else's mistake and making those trades that really do matter in a game. So I played the Chromacus and Mad Scientist on my board instead of playing the Explosive Sheep and pinging and clearing it because I was being greedy and I thought, hey, maybe he doesn't have a Flame Tongue Totem. Well, I was really, really wrong here, and he was able to throw the Flame Tongue Totem in between his spiders. He was able to clear my Chromacus with no, relatively no problems whatsoever. He killed two 1-1 one, one spiders, which was really not a big deal whatsoever, and a totem. So he was able to clear out my Chromacus, which was an 8-drop, with 1-1 one, one spiders, and I don't know why he didn't attack the Mad Scientist here, but either way, he made an incredible play right there and really punished me for not clearing his board. So, making favorable trades, just something you, you need to look at in a game and make sure you're getting the best bang for your buck and try not to get punished by being too greedy like I was. So tip number three is definitely something you need to pay attention to if you're going first. If you're going second, you have coin, this doesn't matter. But if you're going first, you need to pay attention to when your opponent is going to use their coin. So for an example I'd like to show you, I'm going against a Huntard here. He didn't coin out the Mad Scientist on turn two. He didn't coin out an Animal Companion. He didn't coin out a Houndmaster. He's been holding on to it. He's been hoarding it. And I'm like, what the hell? Normally a Hunter is very aggressive and they always coin out something to get that upper edge. Well. Because he didn't coin out anything early, I can only assume he has got some late game cards in his hand. What is a late game card in a hunter deck? Savannah High Main. So of course we're going to see the coin into the Savannah High Main here, which is just something you need to kind of expect if you're going against a hunter and he's just holding on to that coin to get that turn 5 Savannah High Main, which is a huge play from him. In this case, let's say you've got a Polymorph or a Hex in your hand, depending on what class you're playing, kind of just save that and wonder why, hey, he hasn't used his coin yet, definitely probably need to save some of my CC to take care of whatever big creature he plans to bring out a turn early. So heading on to tip number four, that is pay attention to your life along with your opponents. This seems extremely simple, right? Like, of course you're gonna pay attention to your life and your opponents. If you get them to zero, you win. That's the main focus of the game. Well, it may not be as clear cut as that. Sometimes you get so focused on your field, what to attack, your hand, what combos you have, that you kind of lose track at how much damage you can do to them and what you could potentially draw to win the game. So in this example here, it's prime example, is me freaking out when the priest fireballs my face, bringing me down to five health. 
because of this, the first thought in my head is, hey, there's an antique heal bot in my hand. Let's get us out of, you know, holy fire range. Let's not lose this game. Let's play it safe. But what I had actually totally missed was drawing the second fireball, which would have been lethal no matter what. So we double fireball, attack with everything. That's game over. It doesn't really matter what he plays next turn because there is no next turn for him. So even if it looks like you have a clear cut move of, hey, I need to heal up and win this game, playing it safe, take a look and see, hey, do I have lethal this turn? What can I do besides what I think I need to do ASAP? In this situation, if I would have done that, I would have obviously won the game a turn earlier. Either way, I was able to win, but just mistakes like these can definitely change the game. And it's just not something you want to, I lost because I wasn't paying attention, isn't just, it's not a good thing to think about and it's not a good thing to lose because of that. So just kind of slow down, look at your hand, what do you have, and go from there. Our fifth and final main tip is, if you or your opponent has a piloted shredder on the field and you're about to kill it off either or, make sure you kill the shredders off prior to playing any creatures that turn. In this scenario, please ignore me in the bottom left hand corner, as it is the only clip I have of a Doomsayer popping out of the shredder. He should have definitely attacked with his Dr. Boom into my shredder first to see what comes out. If it was a Doomsayer, then he can hold on to his Tyrion, but he makes the mistake of playing his creatures first, which just happens to be a Tyrion, and then attacking the shredder, making it a Doomsayer. And the same goes around in the other example. Let's say I want to kill my opponent's shredder, but I also have a creature to play in my hand. I'll definitely kill my opponent's shredder first, see what comes out, and then play my creature afterwards. Just make sure you do not play your creatures prior to killing the shredder. See what pops out of the shredder first, unlike this paladin did here. Our point five of a tip, it's really not a tip at all. It's something you guys definitely should have by now, but if you don't, craft Dr. Boom. This seems like, why would I craft him? I don't want to play him. Well, let me tell you, he's the best seven drop neutral legendary. People can argue, hey, I like Trogzor. Hey, there's better cards than him. There, no, there's not. I mean, this guy has played in 80% or more of the decks in competitive play, and those who aren't playing him, in my opinion, are severely undermatched just because there's just the potential of this card of a 7-7, seven, seven, two one ones that can deal up to four damage each is just insane. If you add this card to your deck, you will do better without a doubt. I mean, it's unfortunate when he gets big game huntered, but you still have two one one boom bots and you can still kind of play your other big minions now that you know your opponent has gotten rid of their big game hunter. So, in a nutshell, get Dr. Boom. Even if he's 1600 dust, save to get him. You will not be disappointed. He'll win you games. That's our point five of a tip. Hopefully you've enjoyed our entire tip guide. I hopefully, I mean, I hope it helps you. The whole point of this was to kind of give you an oversight on tips you can do and implement into any kind of deck you're playing, no matter if you're playing Druid, Shaman, Mage, Priest, you name it. Utilize these tips. Let me know how you're doing. And thank you for stopping by the end, guys. Always glad to have you. I'm Warshak, of course, and happy whatever the hell day it is.